Um, okay. Um, thank you all very much for coming. Obviously, this is not Rupert Waits, but, uh, but it is John Baylor, and, and w which in my mind is just as good and perhaps even better. So Rupert's car, he was about 20 miles south of uh, Lansing on, I guess, 69, uh, is it? And coming down, and his, uh, uh, he saw smoke coming out from underneath the hood, and I guess the car caught fire, and he got everything out, and he's okay, but his car is not, obviously, and uh, he is renting a car and coming down for this evening's performance, but he can't, couldn't come down for this. So I asked John if he would sub, and he said yes. Uh, this is our, this our 58th radio show, is that right? Something like that. 58, 58, wow, unbelievable. Uh, and John has been with us from the beginning, so this is exciting for me to do that. But we'll kick this off with a theme song. You know how it goes. Also, if you're ready to sing along, please sing along during the chorus at the end of the show. We'd really appreciate that. And please, oh, we have our, where's our applause girl? Oh, she's right there. <laughs> Are you almost done and ready to take on your next job? Okay. Uh, because we're a live show and because we go uh, out over WVPE and about 5,000 people hear us now in our new time slot at 7 o'clock. Uh, we like to have a lot of applause even if we have a few people because it picks up in the final production. So we have special rules and regulations that must be followed that have to do with applause. And our applauseologist just happens to be here today. He's a scientist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and she... <laughs> And she will give you some applause tips. Yeah. Okay. I'll be sitting over there, but what we want to do is uh, clap loud, clap fast. Can you make it sound like a The mayor, the mayor. All right, John, you ready? I'm ready. Let's see if we can kick this thing into high gear. In every life, some rain must fall, and you'll get wet as your sorrow calls. Oh, the sun will rise on a brand new morn. You'll be warm and dry and freshly born. Judith Robert and in memory of our good friend Tom Kapasinskis and with additional support from the Marshall County Community Foundation and the Indiana Arts Commission, Marshall County Tourism, and E. Lee Marshall. From historic downtown Plymouth, Indiana, where the Lincoln Highway and Michigan Road cross the banks of the beautiful Yellow River, it's the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. <laughs> Featured on our program today is an accomplished performer who also happens to be the music producer of the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour, playing and singing our theme song and many of his own during the course of the program, including one for Wisdom with Rosie, A Moment with Nate, and the Shoot the Moon game show. He's a multi-instrumentalist, lead and harmony singer, arranger, and gifted songwriter. He's performed on mandolin, banjo, fiddle, bass, and guitar. He's been found making shows of his original music at coffee shops, farmer's markets, concert venues, libraries, churches, and weddings. And has been a regular performer with his family band at Indiana Fiddler's Gathering and the Winding Creek Bluegrass Festival. He's led church worship services, sung in multiple choirs, and is actively involved in sacred harp or shaped note singing, a full voice hymn tradition. His stampede string band has played here at Wild Rose Moon, and they have produced several original albums together. Please help us welcome to Wild Rose Moon stage for the 58th time, really, Mr. John Baylor. And now, recording. 
recorded live from the Wild Rose Moon Performing Arts Center in historic downtown Plymouth, Indiana, where the Art Deco Reese Theater is soon to enjoy its second lifetime of excitement and inspiration for the benefit of the local and regional community. Here's the radical rascal of all things lunar, or lunatic, your Radio Hour host, George Schricker. Well, the river goes round, around the bend. The river goes round, round, round till the very end. And when it stops, it starts again. It won't be long till the river goes round. It won't be long till the river goes round and round and round, my friend. Well, thank you. Welcome to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. We're here with Katie Smith, and uh, you're kind of subbing in here. We've had Jacob Marino here for a mm -hmm, while. Mm-hmm, sure Couldn't have. be here with us today. Yeah. And here you are, all the way from Italy. You were in Italy, right? I was in Italy for four months on a semester abroad, yeah. What was the most exciting thing you did in Italy? Oh, there were so many exciting things. Um, did, you I, did you go up in the Tower of Pisa? I did well. I didn't, but I went. Um, I went up in the Duomo in Florence, which is just as beautiful, if not more. I would say. Um, I had a lot of friends that were also abroad during that time, yeah. so we all came from our various countries together for a weekend, and that was really wonderful. How did you get around? Public transportation? Oh or? yeah, from where I lived, I lived about an hour away from my school. Um, by public transportation, an hour or more by walking. Um, yeah. So I took a tram, an above ground tram, every day. Wow. Yeah. So uh, you were going, what kind of things were you taking in school? I took a mafia history class. Oh, um, that would be appropriate. Yeah, I know. It was yeah. really interesting. The, the could, professor was very scary looking. Yeah. Um. And you could like, you could like then, you, you could mm -hmm. then intern with the mafia, right? Oh, uh, well, I sure hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I took that. I took a, a Baroque art history class because wow. Baroque was only in Italy. Uh, or mostly in Italy. Um, I took an Italian class so that I could at least learn how to order food at a restaurant. Okay. Um, what, what kind of things could you order in Italian? Oh, boy. <laughs> it's been a month and a half since <laughs> I've been back in the United States, and I haven't had to speak Italian. <laughs> how about some spaghetti puttanesca? Mm, mm, good, th that good. That would work, all right. Yeah. Hey, um, we have, as usual, our... Our good friend Rosie. Oh, here yeah. Today. Hey, Rosie. Don't we? That's correct. So we've got some words of wisdom from our resident poet and philosopher, Rosie. Rosie sits atop my announcing booth here at the moon and is ringed with wild roses around her head, multicolored braids down her back, and is attired in a silken dress with pea green leather petals. Rosie sits pensive and ready to dispense thoughts that are, in the words of Carl the skateboarder, both rad and gnarly. Her ph philosophical notes spring from her hands, both of which are verdant in green leaves. John, take it away. We have a note from Rosie. This note was wrote by Rosie. It's a wonder of a note. Fresh off a ferry boat If we voted on a quote This note we'd vote the goat We have a note From Rosie Rosie And what does Rosie, what's she working on these days? Well, ah, apparently, George, Rosie's been studying about the moon landing in 1969. The moon landing in 1969? Mm-hmm. And she reads a quote today by someone who was on the first Apollo mission to the moon. Someone. Here are those words. Who could it be? I really believe that if the political leaders of the world could see their planet from a distance of, let's say, 100,000 miles their outlook would be fundamentally changed. The all-important borders would be invisible, that noisy argument suddenly silenced. 
The tiny globe would continue to turn, serenely ignoring its subdivisions, presenting a unified facade that would cry out for unified understanding, for homogenous treatment. The Earth must become, as it appears, blue and white, not capitalist or communist. Blue and white, not rich or poor. Blue and white, not envious or envied. Wow. Mm -hmm. Those are beautiful words. And someone said those that well, was on that mission. I can't tell you. Why not? Because we want to save it for the game show. Oh, okay, for the game show. Well, I can be patient, and we'll all learn later uh, when Mr. S Matt Scutchfield hosts the, bed the game show. But in the meantime, John Baylor. Hey, George. You're here with us today. I am, yeah. You know, I'd like to start at the very beginning. You know how I like to do that with, I do, yeah. with people, and I say, what is your earliest possible memory? Drill back down through that in, enormous brain of yours, mm -hmm. and go back down all the way, if you can, uh, philomatically, and, and see if you can find the earliest possible memory for me. It's going to be tough to dig through all those files because my brain's so big. <laughs> It makes it hard to remember things. Yes, yes. But I'm sure there's something back there that you remember, some early image. Or well, I don't, I don't know how interesting these things are. Well, it doesn't but matter. We, <laughs> we, um, we used to live just south of Walton, kind of outside of town. Right, right. And I, I don't remember our house at all, um, but I remember there were two big uh, gas storage tanks that are on the road. They're on 35. And if we were, like, down in Galveston or down in Kokomo, we had a lot of family in Galveston. Or if we were down shopping in Kokomo or something, when we got by those storage tanks, we were just about home. And, and I remember being in the back of the car late at night coming home from somewhere and just kind of, like, barely being awake and looking out and seeing those storage tanks and thinking, oh, good, we're almost home. From, from being out somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Wherever you might, where so would that's, you? That's one of the very earliest memories for me. Well, what a, a, a wonderful memory. Did, <laughs> what, did the, what did the tanks look like? Well, they're just, um, you know how like on, on the naked gun he, sees, he says, uh, everything, everywhere I look, I see something that reminds me of her. Yes. They're, they're those kind of tanks. Oh, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. So uh, uh, speak. Speaking of, of, of that and inspiration that we get from various sources, mm -hmm. um, could you uh, sing a song for us? Yeah, although I don't know what I'm going to do here, George, because uh, um, I you, know, I you just know this already. But for the benefit of the radio audience, we had a, a cancellation. Yes, and a, a, right. There was like a car explosion. Uh -huh. uh, so well, it I wasn't that bad, but it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I understood that like a stray bullet hit somebody's car <laughs> and it blew up. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't. Okay. It really wasn't, no. Um, so, uh, so I'm kind of stepping in last minute. Yeah. And so I'm scrambling to come up with we some We brought things. you in by dirigible, right? <laughs> that was the fastest way to get here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we did. So I'm going to play a song here. You asked me if I could do something funny. Yes, yeah, funny. And, funny. And yeah. I don't have anything funny. So I, <laughs> so I can't. Okay. But um, Have you got something really, really sad and tragic <laughs> for me? No, I don't have that. that <laughs> okay. I, I don't really have very many emotions in my music. It's just kind of there. Oh, I find your music very emotional. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, I was going to say this isn't exactly a comedy song, but um, I, I think the, the idea to me is kind of funny anyways. Um, it's making fun of my brother. Oh, your brother? Yeah, my brother, um, he just like, I don't know, he just gets crushes on all women all the time. Yeah. Like, uh, it just doesn't take very much to impress him, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, so he was, uh, like, we, we, we were out on the road in front of his house, and yeah. the, the male woman came yeah. by. Right. And, and he was telling me about this, this male woman. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, a woman who delivers the mail. Right, right. That... Male has different meanings, but oh, that's I what I mean. I understand. I yeah. understand. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I just I kind of would write this song. This is for my brother. Like just some woman happens to be passing by, so you just go ahead and fall in love with her. Okay. All right. Does this have the gas tanks in it? Um. No, the song does not. My brother okay. has some gas tanks in him. Okay. I 
sit and wait for the post to come Cause I don't have me a postman She's a lady She's a lady And every time she walks by I try to work outside I pull the weeds and I edge the wall aiming for a little small talk she's a lady See, it's just not that funny of a song, but like, uh, to me, like, you, you, you just sit back and you picture somebody, like my brother, out in the then yard. Then all of a sudden it becomes really He's comical. He's timing, yeah. timing his trips out to work in the yard yeah, to grow his garden, right, just at the right moment for the male lady. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> I love it. It's very, it's kind of romantic, actually. It'd be a good... Well... Uh, she probably doesn't think so. Oh, well, it just, you never know. I have never met your brother, have I? I think no, so. No, 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 no. <laughs> He's, you're, you're never to speak with him. <laughs> All right. Well, well, listen, give us another one. Uh, maybe is this for your sister? I don't have a sister. Oh. I got some more brothers. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't care. Just sing a song. Okay. I 
That's a beautiful song, and did you write that for anyone in particular? Um, let's see. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think about this. I'm married. I, I might have written it for my wife. I don't know. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't write it for somebody else. Oh. Um, it's, uh, well, I, I think rather than being like, um, this, is, this is for a person. So for me, um, I don't, I, I feel like I don't write a lot of love songs, and then I look at my songs, and there's actually tons and tons of them. Yeah. But um, but I have like a kind of frustration with love songs, um, in that uh, that most of the time when you listen to a love song, then to me it feels like okay, there's a lot more to life than this, and there's also a lot more to like a relationship and loving somebody than what you hear in the love song. Right, you can't um, get it and all. And so when when I write a love song, like um, I, I want it to be an expression of love for a person. I don't want to dismiss that part of it. But I feel like there's always got to be something more than just that, right. and and so for this, um, I, I obviously it's got that love song element in it, but I think of this as as being about um, like frustrations in life. Uh, the callus on my heart will work out through my hands. So like I've got I got some kind of problem in me, right. which I mean it sounds like a relationship problem in the song, but it just it could be anything. Like there's some kind of problem in me, and I need to get it out. Right. So I'm just going to go shave some wood for a little while. Good idea. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, great idea. I'm sorry I didn't bring some today for you. but uh, That's okay. But I, you're I got, shaving away on I the guitar. This. Yeah, there. yeah, right. right. <laughs> well, listen, uh, we're, we're excited about uh, continuing this show today, but we've got to take a little break, and you've got to switch guitars, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm just going to play this one in the next section with you. Okay. So I'm going to play the theme music on this. I hope it doesn't ruin the show. No, no, it won't. No, no. 
John Baylor during our Shoot the Moon game show and in our last segment. But up next, however, we have a surprise guest who will sing an original song dedicated to the great songwriter, John Prine. With support from Judith Robert and in memory of our dear friend, Tom Kapasinskis, and from the generosity of the Marshall County Community Foundation, the Indiana Arts Commission, and Ely Marshall, you're listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Well, welcome back to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour here. We're, we're, we're here with our special guest, me. <laughs> and uh, I'm just tuning up the guitar, so I see that it's fallen out a bit. And uh, it has a capo on, so I want to make... very happy you joined us today. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Do you, mm -hmm. you want to know my earliest memory? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a song, actually, I did write for John Prine, uh, and, uh, but this was before he passed away. It, just recently, we had Siri Undlin uh, from Humbird here, and she was talking about the night that John Prine died, and she wrote a song called Pink Moon that's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wrote this song before that, and it was really one of those songs that I realized after I wrote it that it was really heavily influenced by John Prine and, and his work. And, um, and I also uh, wrote it for my mother, who passed away uh, actually uh, early on in the COVID uh, period. Um, and um, we were not able to go in and see her in her last moments, and that was really hard for me. Um, we finally got in there, and... Um, but, uh, and we're having her celebration of life this year, so uh, I sort of dedicate this to her too because the first verse is based on sort of thinking dearly about my mother. So here it is, Precious Time. <laughs> From the moment of birth My life was a blur I can't remember much Yes, that's for sure I kicked and I cried And I wriggled about I was doing my best Just to figure it out Mama picked me up She put me in her arms She cuddled me close kept me safe and warm She looked at me And she smiled real fine Said another child's born To precious time Precious time Precious time You got what you got What you got just fine You can search for diamonds of gold in your mind But nothing's more precious than good old precious time spider in the grass they'll set you a trap so you get lost in your past and a star in your future will twinkle and shine you'll hitch on for a ride 
get lost in the climb. So many pitfalls, so many ways to shake loose. Till you're down in the dumps and you're eating cooked goose. There's not one answer or Shakespearean line. You gotta do your best to make your precious time, precious time, precious time. You got what you got, what you got's just fine. You can search for diamonds or gold in your mind, but nothing's more precious. Good old precious time. stumbled on Eve. He took a bite of her apple and he spit out the seed. And Eve, she grew round, round as the moon said there's something inside. It's gonna be here soon. God came a-walking in the garden that day. Said Adam and Eve, there'll be no more play. No more living the life divine. Till you start learning about your precious time, precious time, precious time. You got what you got. What you got's just fine. You can search for diamonds or gold in your mind, but nothing's more precious than good old precious time. Precious time, precious time. Oh, the earth goes right on spinning. As all our clocks unwind When the call comes yonder It'll ease your mind That you lived each moment In good old precious time And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from our hometown to yours, the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour presents our very own audience participation quiz show, Shoot the Moon! It don't matter to me how smart you are, maybe you're a big buffoon. You don't need to be quick on the draw, all you gotta do is shoot the moon, shoot. Here's the host of Shoot the Moon, the original colonist of little used words and an often chuffy, twistical, and gut foundered fellow of ribald jollification, Matt Scutchfield. Well, thank you, Katie, for that wonderful, jollified uh, introduction. Uh, while I get today's two contestants uh, pull up here, can you tell us uh, about the rules for this? Sketch a rich boogaloo bing bomb, Scotch. Prior to the show, 
Audience members indicate their willingness to participate in Shoot the Moon by supplying an answer to this inane survey question. Are you now, or have you ever been, a student of behavioral psychology? And with that question answered in a demonstrably random manner, with any number of attendant variables distinguishing the method a person might freely choose, or so they may deceptively think in the affirmative, and as a result be needlessly subjected to this further interrogation, are you willing, ready, and able to gently access your remarkable yet environmentally predetermined being in an often silly and self-deprecating manner in the futile attempt to answer a series of capricious and often ill-conceived questions? Yeah. Great! <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and from a collection of audience members who have learned to push a button to ask for a stimulating electrical shock while executing a short exercise of gymnastic maneuvers, during which they must answer with the word yes, or something like it, exactly two contestants are selected to play Shoot the Moon. So now, let's play Shoot the Moon! <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Katie. So here in uh, contestant one position, we have Ainsley Marshall, right? Yes. Uh, well, welcome. And it says here that you are a student right now. Yes. What are you studying? Uh, music education Wonderful. at the University of Florida. Oh, wow, okay, so just around the corner. Right. <laughs> and then here in um, contestant uh, two, we have Mark Center. And it says here, a uh, little known fact, that you're mayor of Plymouth. That's what they tell me. Okay, well, so we have a celebrity here today. This is no, awesome. No, not really. <laughs> so it says, uh, fun fact, that you have, you're a new grandpa. I am. How I, does that My uh, little girl, granddaughter, Lena, will be one year old on, on 20th of June. So. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. Well, Ainsley, uh, you're in the contestant one spot. So what uh, topic are you choosing first here? Um, I'll go big blue marble. All right. Let me get my papers organized. I can take it down. So, uh, this is about uh, the first moon landing, uh, big blue marble. Apollo 11 was the American space flight that first landed humans on the moon. Commander Neil Armstrong and lunar module pilot Buzz Aldrin landed the Apollo lunar module Eagle. On July 20th, 1969, at 2017 Universal Time, and Armstrong became the first person to step onto the moon's surface six hours and 39 minutes later, on July 21st, at 2.56 Universal Time. Aldrin joined him 19 minutes later, and they spent about two and a quarter hours together exploring the site they had named Tranquility Base upon landing. Armstrong and Aldrin collected 47 and a half pounds of lunar material to bring back to Earth. Another pilot flew in the command module, Columbia, which was in a continual lunar orbit during this time, waiting and making ready for their return. This pilot's name was A, James A. Lovell Jr., B, Michael Collins, or C, <laughs> Alan Shepard? C, Alan Shepard. Unfortunately, it was B, Michael Collins. During his day flying solo around the moon, Collins never felt lonely. In the 48 minutes of each orbit when he was out of radio contact with the Earth while Columbia passed around the far side of the moon, the feeling was reported not of fear of loneliness, but rather awareness, anticipation, satisfaction, confidence, and almost exultation. So there we go. All right, uh, Mark, what uh, category will we choose? Uh, Yippee. You? Okay. <laughs> Yippee ti yay yay. The sons of the pioneer are uh, one of the United States' earliest Western singing groups. Known for their vocal performances, their musicianship, and their songwriting, they produced innovative recordings that have inspired many Western music performers and remain popular through the years. Since 1933, through many changes in membership, the sons of the pioneers have remained one of the longest surviving country music vocal groups. Instrumental in the development of the group was a performer who would later name himself Roy Rogers and would go on to fame as an actor, singer, and television host. Which of the following was Roy Rogers' original name? A. Archibald Alec Leach B. Leonard Franklin Sly or C. Julius Henry Marx B. Sly That is correct! Right, uh, so we have two left. Uh, what category for you? Up on the roof. All right. 
Up on the roof, on January 30th, 1969, the Beatles performed an unannounced concert from the rooftop of their Apple headquarters at 3 Seville Row within central London's office and fashion district. Joined by keyboardist Billy Preston, the band played a 42-minute set before the Metropolitan Police asked them to reduce the volume. It was the final public performance of their career. They performed nine takes of five songs as crowds of onlookers, many of whom were on their lunch break, congregated in the streets and on the roofs of local buildings. The concert ended with the conclusion of Get Back with John Lennon joking, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves, and I hope we've passed the audition. The January 29th audio tapes for Lindsay Hard's video production capture McCartney pleading with Lennon that a live performance was essential to maintain the Beatles' connection with their audience. What was it that McCartney gave for his understanding the rest of the band didn't want to play on the roof? Was it A, they were all just exhausted and the end of the band was in sight, so what's the point? B, the other members of the band were filled with stage fright. Or C, they thought it was corny and too pseudo-hip. C. C. Unfortunately, it is B. It says the other members of the band were filled with stage fright. The, 20, uh, the January 29th audio tapes uh, capture McCartney pleading with Lennon that a live performance was essential and the band members merely needed to overcome their stage fright. All right. One last category up here. Uh, England Swings. Big Ben is the nickname for the great bell of the striking clock at the north end of the Palace of Westminster in London, England, and the name is frequently extended to refer also to the clock and the clock tower. The tower was designed by Augustus Pugin in a neo-Gothic style. When completed in 1859, its clock was the largest and most accurate four-face striking and chiming clock in the world. The dials of the clock are 22 and a half feet in diameter. All four nations of the UK are represented on the tower on shields featuring a rose for England, a thistle for Scotland, a shamrock for Ireland, and what plant for Wales? Is it A, bog rosemary, B, tenby daffodil, or C, a wild leek? I'll go the rosemary. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is a wild leek, C. So, uh, Ainsley, this is up to you. We can do a bonus question, which would tie the game, possibly. You want to do that? Yes. All <laughs> right. <laughs> this is also about England. Uh, and if you're around tonight, that's where our guitarist is originally from, so that's why you have such an English theme here. Uh, the tower was originally named the Clock Tower, but it was renamed in 2012 to mark the Diamond Jubilee of which famous person? Was it A... Boris Johnson, famous for his uh, ju uh, Jubilee Christmas parties. Was it B, Elton John, or C, Elizabeth II? Yes. B? B, Elton John? No, I'm sorry, it was C, Elizabeth II. But, uh, Katie, uh, what's the score? Yeah, well, yeah. Matt, we have Ainsley here with zero. And <laughs> Mark with a landslide of one. So, <laughs> can you tell the audience uh, what happens here on Shoot the Moon? Well, as a matter of fact, win or lose, everyone gets lucky on Shoot the Moon. Both Ainsley and Mark have won a sticker, a big wild rose moon sticker, right. suitable for applying to one's orange almond biscotti, one's <laughs> clay fired bouillabaisse bowl, your tin Thank mug you. of McKesson's, or your front of your wall hung water closet. So, congratulations, Ainsley and Mark. Everyone wins when we play Shoot the Moon. <laughs> Well, we'll be back with more of John Baylor on the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour.
Well, we're back with the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour, and we're, we're here with our music producer and good friend, and who, who, who the Radio Hour could not function without, uh, Mr. John Baylor, and he's quite a talent. He's, he's uh, as mentioned earlier, he's uh, played with his family band for a long time, haven't you, John? I have, yeah, uh, for almost as long as I've been playing guitar. Baylor's Golden... Yeah, age, Golden Age Band. Age Band, yep. right. And, um, and they've been doing all kinds of stuff all over and playing your church and everywhere else, right? Um, yeah, a handful of places. I yeah. Don't, um, we did the uh, Kendallville um, Memorial Festival for the first time. So that's yeah. Well, I shouldn't say for the first time. My dad was there like in 1973 or something like that. And you played down at the Fiddler's Festival. Yeah, right? yep. Right? That's, a, that's a big thing down right. there. They have yeah, that. we're, we're uh, like one of the house bands down there. So most festivals have this rule. You get to play two years in a row, and then you got to quit. You know, right. Take a year off and let another right. band in. Right. Um, but we've, we've pretty much done every year since we started. The oh, that's COVID great. kind of messed things that up a little, little yeah. bit. Right, yeah. yeah. And I believe the match sellers have sold, have played there yeah. too as well. Yep. And they're, uh, they're coming uh, in July, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, l let's hear what... what uh, you were at the state fair. I remember we talked about this because I think that's how this all got going. Uh, the Wild Roseman Radio Hour got going, you and I, and you were talking about playing down at the state fair uh, in some kind of WLS, uh, uh, just, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if I would say that's how the radio show got started. I think you had the idea before you met me. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, we played, me and my dad, and actually, my mom did it one year with us as well. We yeah. played in a WLS National Barn Dance reenactment. That's it. That's it. So right. uh, the National Barn Dance was a, a huge program, and, and it, uh, it, it was it was sort of the Grand Ole Opry, but it, it kind of turned into the Grand Ole Opry. Right. Um, and I, I've spent a lot of time performing in nursing homes, and I did that full time for five years. And I, I met tons and tons of people who would say we were not allowed to listen to the radio. We had no no room for amusement, you know, like yeah. there was work to be done and it was hard life and, you know, we couldn't be goofing around. Right. Uh, but they said on, on Saturday when the National Barn Dance came on, that was the one exception, the, the one show we were allowed to listen to. Yeah, and I understand that they, that, uh, they hired people out of Chicago to travel around and promote the show by, uh, yeah, yeah, right. by doing concerts and singing. Mm -hmm. I forget, we, I think we had somebody here who was talking about that and who had... I don't know, had some relationship with somebody who had done that. Yeah, we do. I wish I could remember. I, I uh, wish I could, someone's, too. Someone's father had, yeah. was a, a part of one of those traveling WLS Right, that's groups. right. Yeah. But anyway, well, uh, okay, we'll play another one because uh, we got to hear one. But, uh, but your life is so interesting. We'll come back to it. Right. Okay, good. I don't want to give up on it just yet. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll play an old tune. Um, I'm playing this national guitar. This is, uh, I, I spend a lot of money when I buy instruments. If anybody like really knows their guitars and then they study the things that I play, then I'll think, oh man, this guy must be loaded. But I actually don't spend money on anything except for guitars. So, um, I mean, the, like the most money I ever made is teaching public high school. Um, and, uh, and we're kind of known for not making very much. But like I said, it just, it just goes to music. I don't have anything else that really interests me to, you know, like uh, buy a boat or whatever. I just, just want some nice guitars I can play on. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm playing this guitar, national steel-bodied guitar. And I'm not doing a lot of impressive guitar work because George really surprised me with this radio show. So I haven't, haven't really had time to work up nice arrangements of these songs I'm doing. So I think I'm going to do a, a cover tune. And this will be a, a cover song. This was written by W.C. Handy, um, Father of the Blues. So that way I get to do a little bit of blues finger picking, um, which, is, which is mostly what these guitars are used for. Um, I, like, uh, I like doing some other things with them because I think they got more tricks in them than what people use them for. But uh, I still can't resist playing a little bit of blues finger picking when I pick it up. Down. I hate to see 
that evening sun go down it makes me feel I'm on my last go round if I feel tomorrow like I feel today if I feel tomorrow like I feel today gonna pack my trunk and make my getaway St. Louis woman with her diamond rings drags that man around by her apron strings if it wasn't for makeup and her store-bought hair St. Louis woman wouldn't go nowhere, nowhere. I got the St. Louis blues, just as blue as I can be. My cow's got a heart like a rock cast into the sea. Oh, she wouldn't have gone so far away from me. sun go down I hate to see that evening sun go down it makes me feel I'm on my last go round thank you that was sweet very sweet just lovely um when you were uh, when you were growing up, did you were you first playing the guitar or uh, did you play something else? Well, um, when I was I guess in um, fourth grade, I asked my dad if he'd teach me to play guitar, and he said my hands were too small. And he gave me a mandolin, and I I learned three chords on that. He showed it to me, and I played one song, and. Um, it was not the instrument that I wanted to play, so I didn't go very far with it. Um, I remember asking my dad, are there any other songs I can play with these three chords? And he said, there's no limit to the songs you can play with those three chords. <laughs> right. So, um, so it, it struck me, and I was, I was interested, I guess, in learning more, but um, I, I, he wasn't really interested in pushing me in music. He's uh, like a, a very, very talented musician himself. Right. But, um, and, and there are some ways, you know, he, he pushed his kids and, and we were resentful of it. But I think he was very careful not to do that with music. It was too important to him. Right, right. Um, and so, uh, so I, I never really asked him to do anything else until, until my hands grew to be bigger than his. And then I tried again junior year of high school. I started playing guitar. Yeah. I, did, I thought about playing the song. I did a... This, I didn't play this. Not quite like this. In fourth grade. That was my song. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. Oh, you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was the first song that I learned to play. I did that on mandolin. Yeah, and uh, my brothers were singing harmony, spiritual. and I was singing lead. So we had four-part harmony and me playing an instrument, and my dad just sitting back and watching. And yeah. uh, 
like as a parent, you know, I didn't really notice this at the time, but like as, as a parent, looking back, I think, man, that must have been a, a heck of a moment for dad. I bet. I bet. I think that's one of the first songs I learned on the guitar. Yeah. Is Do Lord, because it's fairly simple, you know. Yeah, just, right. Just but a lovely, what a lovely tune. That's great. Um, so you played the, you played the guitar in high school, and then when you, you have a band, you, uh, the Stra Stampede String Band, uh, you toured with them for, an, uh, you are, I don't know if you're still touring, but you, st you got the band sort of potentially out there, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know, uh, touring, like we never really left home, you know, to, to go on what you would really call a tour. Right. But um, at our busiest, we did, uh, maybe we did 70 shows in a year. Yeah. Um, which is more than there are weekends, you know, by a, by a right. pretty good margin. So uh, we, we had some pretty busy years, but never really on the road. Um, we're, we're sort of playing. Um, Aaron and I did a show together this past weekend. Oh, that's great. And we got a couple of things booked here and there. We're not, we're not very active right now. We're still trying to recover. From, right, right. Not, not just from the pandemic, but some other, uh, yeah. some other issues going on as well. So it's, um, it's slowed down a little bit, and me and Aaron were always kind of the main uh, singers and the main songwriters, and so we're kind of sticking together, still doing something, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully uh, the, the fire gets going again before long. Well, good, good. D uh, well, do you have another song for us, John? We'd love to hear one. Sure. <laughs> Someone that's true I wouldn't know what, what to do Need some place for crying to I'm not the man for you Cause I have walked this life alone I've had no one to lean upon And I don't know what it takes to love And I don't know what it takes to love say that love is kind, but I'll never change my mind. Should you love me anyway, I wouldn't know what to say. Cause I have walked this life alone I've had no one to lean upon And I don't know what it takes to love And I don't know what it takes to love I've earned, but love I don't deserve. Should you love me anyway, I wouldn't know what to say. Cause I
I think you should write an opera. Uh, th those songs contain so much emotion, and your voice is just astounding. Isn't his voice just remarkable? <laughs> I've just, I always thought that from the very beginning when I first met you, that your, your emphasis and your sense and rootedness in your voice is just remarkable. And I think that you, you come by that from the love of singing and, and uh, you sing shape note, right? Yeah, well, I, I kind of got into shape note singing a little older. Well, sort of. I, I grew up at Howard Miami Mennonite Church, and we did yeah. um, we did a cappella hymn singing when I, when I got there, not when I got a little older. Right. Um, we did have a shape note hymnal there, which, which is really helpful. Um, even when you don't have any idea what you're looking at, right. you get this, like, um, do, mi, so, and, like, you can see the shapes for those things, and you can kind of feel like, well, this note fits into a chord. Right. And and this is this part of the chord. Like even I know I'm I'm speaking in a way that doesn't quite make sense to most people, but it's like it doesn't quite make sense to you when you're doing it either when you're a kid. Yeah. Um, but it, it still helped a lot. But I I spent a lot of time singing with my family and with church um, and with the Sacred Harp community. Um, it it's it's like it, it's painful to me that that people don't sing. Yeah. Um And and like I mean we're just we're losing so much. Um, as as a culture and as a people, like when we. That's not something we do. We don't get together and just like let our voices ring. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we just uh, like we don't know what we're missing. I, uh, yes, I agree with you. And you and your singing is, I want to say, almost tribal in the sense that it, you know, it it literally feels like it comes from your very soles of your feet up through your, <laughs> your spine and and resonates with your whole body at at its disposal. And that's just a really beautiful thing. I, I get comments from people a lot saying you sound like you mean what you're singing. Yeah. And it takes me by surprise because I think, well, why would you sing it? You know, yeah. like anybody who sings, like they sure. mean what they're singing. You know, I mean, the next guy who gets up here and, uh, you know, plays a couple of tunes and sings something, it's it's he's doing it because it matters to him. Right. Um, so I mean, in a sense, it's kind of a mystery. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I mean, maybe it's just just because of doing it and being around it and growing up, uh, growing up with it. I I haven't. I haven't listened to tons and tons of music. I mean, I'm familiar with a lot of different things, yeah. but a lot of musicians listen to everything that they possibly can. Right. And and me, um, I just I just sang all the time, um, and I, like music is just all around me. Um, in in my culture is like a living thing, right. rather than just a piece of entertainment or something that you listen to. Right. Uh, and and maybe that's more than anything else what has shaped that in me. It's something that you, you do, and it's like it is a part of you. It's not just, I think I'll try my hand at singing, but, but it's part of who you are. Well, it's a remarkable gift you have, and thank you so much for coming to the Wild Rose Moon Radio thank Hour you. today, like you do all the time, but sharing your life with us. Um, so um, where are we? Um, we are with the... Uh, yeah, with you're, you. you're just waiting for me to switch guitar. Yeah, that's all. That's all. With support from Judith Robert and in memory of our good friend Tom Kapasinskis, and with additional support from Marshall County Community Foundation and E. Lee Marshall, you've been listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Our audience has been so good, uh, and our game show participants. Uh, uh, we want to thank singer and songwriter John Baylor for coming in. Uh, announcer Katie Smith, game show host Matt Scutchfield, stage manager Howard Gibbs, audio engineers Nate Butler and Yolanda Jin, uh, Matthew Bergmoser, our photographer, video producers Jim Yoakum and Sean Hasty, our camera operators uh, Jim Yoakum, he's back there, H hospitality coordinators Jennifer Reed, Martina Sam and Cindy Davis, moonlight makers Jeannie P Pazdurka, and special thanks to our applauseologist Martina Sam. 
for her devotion to her to her art. Hey, John. Yeah. Is every moment of your corpuscular momentum <laughs> rallied from its everyday humdums, humdrum state? <laughs> Shall I try this again? I think. <laughs> hey, no, John. I, I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Is it? Oh, just sing. Just play the thing. So when you think you've lost that life, all pain and heartache, fill your soul with strife. Just remember, as you're tumbling down, it won't be long till the river goes round. Everybody! Down. The river, river goes round, round the bend. The river goes round, round, round till the very end. And when, and when it, it stops, stops it starts again. It won't be long till the river goes round. It won't be long till the river goes round and round and round, my friend.